In this lesson, we'll talk about the general considerations we should think about when we are creating our data story and when we're creating the visuals that complement our data story. As professionals who work with data, we are often given a lot of data and we are tasked to answer some questions, find opportunities, find any hidden insights about the data. And data storytelling is about creating that narrative. It's piecing together some of the insights that we discover so that our audience will see what we see and they get to know what we discovered about the data. And we know this is important because sometimes these discoveries can influence decisions and they can even change the course of an organization's direction. What we are essentially saying though is that data storytelling is all about effective communication. Let's break this down a little bit. There are three main components needed for effective communication to occur. At the center of it is a message. It's our narrative. This is what needs to be conveyed from sender to receiver. And we also need to note that if any of these components fail, effective communication does not occur. After analyzing the data, we probably have some insights and some understanding about that data that nobody else sees yet. And that will help us shape our narrative. But we also need to be very intentional about what we're going to include in this narrative. We don't want to add any details or anything else that might clutter or confuse the story. We as senders, we also have control over how we deliver this message. We have control over which visuals, which charts we're going to use to complement our message. We can also choose the language, the tone, the medium that we're going to use to convey our data story. Now, the third component that is needed for effective communication to happen, we don't have a lot of control over that. We cannot control if the receiver will choose to receive the message or reject the message. However, while we cannot cater to every type of audience, we can make deliberate efforts to maximize the chances of our message or our story being received. Whatever our message is or whoever our audience is, we need to make sure that there's some kind of alignment, that the message is something that is useful to them, relevant to them, or interesting to them. And we have to be able to deliver it in a manner that they can appreciate and accept. Now for this to happen, we need to know what they need. We need to get to know our audience a little bit what problems are we trying to solve for them? What opportunities are we presenting to them? We need to be able to connect to our audience somehow. If, for example, we are targeting a wide reach of audiences, different groups of audiences, this means there's more variability. Different backgrounds, different skill levels, different understanding, different expertise, different levels of appreciation. So in some ways, we need to find what that common ground is. How do we talk to them in a way that allows us to connect to majority of them? In some ways, this communication has to feel specific and personal. In order to make that connection, we have to shape our story in a way that it feels like it is catered to them. If there are any barriers to establishing effective communication, we need to identify what those are. We need to prevent them from happening if we can. But we also need to accept the fact that there will be times when even if the message is right, the sender has chosen the right avenue and tone to deliver, and we've done our best, sometimes there will be just refusal to accept. And it could be for any reason. So we just need to know that this is a possibility. This can happen, and this does happen. So how can we make sure that we craft our message and our data story so it can reach our target audience? This involves a series of decisions and with each decision, there's going to be trade-offs. It's going to be a balancing act. There will be a lot of compromises or a series of balancing acts and compromises. For example, we may choose a chart, even if personally we think a different kind of chart is better, but you know your audience can appreciate and understand this other chart better. So that is a compromise, that is a decision that you may need to make. Whatever decisions we make, there will always be pros and cons and there will be risks and benefits. We just need to be aware of what those are. So let's just try to remember, we have some control over our message and we have some control over how we deliver that message. And while we don't have any control over our audience, we can be aware of the considerations that can help increase acceptance and adoption. 
So in this module, we're really going to look at our audience and these balancing acts. What trade-offs do we usually face depending on our audience? One thing I should note, and this is just based on experience, we should not impose what we think is best practice. Just because we think the best visualization should be a bar chart does not mean we should impose it if that's not how the audience can appreciate and use the insights we provide. For example, if your audience or your stakeholders are used to seeing pie charts, simply telling them it's bad practice will not help adoption. If people are used to looking at data one way, we cannot simply take that method away or yank it away and expect that they will appreciate this new way that we are introducing to them. If we take away something that they find value in, or if we tell our audience that they're doing it the wrong way, that can lead to resentment and rejection. So we need to make sure that we take care of how we deliver this message. And based on experience, when people and culture are ready for change, they will embrace the change. But sometimes it takes time. It also takes awareness and a little bit of hand-holding from people who are more aware about the benefits of seeing things a new way. We need to keep our audience top of mind if we want effective communication to happen. So let's go through some other considerations that can help us maximize the reception of our message and data story. We don't have full control over any or all of these, but awareness of these considerations can go a long way. First is convention and openness. Second is all about background and use of jargon. Third is about the need for precision. Fourth is about the presentation medium. And fifth is about the time that our audience has to look at our visuals and our data story and how we can potentially incorporate interactivity in our data story. Let's talk about convention and openness first. Convention is typically the way something is usually done and conventions are great because they reduce that learning curve. It means that we don't have to reintroduce concepts because people are already aware of them. So if the convention and familiarity, let's say, is about pie charts, we should consider that. We know pie charts can be hard to read, especially without label or especially if you have too many slices. But if this is how your audience is used to receiving data, we can still present pie charts and slowly try to introduce different ways of seeing the same information in a different chart. We can start having conversations of why perhaps a bar chart might be a little bit different, a little bit better. And even if sometimes they're already using effective charts, but you know there is another chart that can be used that will give them different kinds of insights, again, we can gauge when they are ready to receive this, and we can potentially have those conversations about how different charts can give you different insights. I think the other thing we need to remember is that the charts that we produce that complement our story, they're not mutually exclusive. Just because we have a bar chart does not mean we shouldn't have a pie chart. It is possible to have both. Different charts and different representations often tell different parts of the story. And collectively, they can paint a more holistic picture of what's happening. And collectively, they can be more valuable. And again, we have to gauge our audience's openness to perhaps seeing things a new way. We can't just impose what we think is best practice or a better chart because our data story really should be catering to our audience and not us. We also need to gauge if our audience already has enough background information for us to tell the data story because sometimes that will influence our use of jargon or technical terms that might be very specific to a group. Let us take this Tableau public dashboard, for example. This dashboard was created by Zach Geis, and it's part of a Sports Viz Sunday visualization. So in here, the audience is really catered to people who are already familiar with basketball terms, of people who are watching the NBA. As we scroll around, we can see jargon that is very specific to the NBA. And if you're not aware of this sport, then you may not be able to glean any insights from this particular dashboard. We also need to be aware of our audience's need for precision. We know that with text tables, we don't have that pre-attentive processing. You require focus to figure out what the patterns are. Is it good? Is it bad? It's hard to glean any insights. However, our audience may need the exact numbers. Hence, we should provide them with a text table. 
And when they're ready, we can start introducing different kinds of encoding, but still present the actual numbers that they need to use. So in this case, we may start introducing a highlight table. They still get their numbers, but now you can see different kinds of insights that are popping up. They may see value in this right away, or the adoption might be slower, but we cannot rush adoption. We also have a myriad of devices, and this may help inform or shape the way we're going to visualize our data. If we have big screen, if we have high resolution, if it's a wall display, there's more we can show. There's probably more we can do. However, for smaller devices, we have to be aware that there's only so much that we can show and retain clarity. Another big consideration, especially for executive dashboards, we need to know what our audiences need and how much time they have. So for executive dashboards, usually it's going to be very specific numbers right away. Executives probably don't have a lot of time to look through that dashboard all the time. So we want to surface the most important numbers, the most important KPIs right away. Now, if they do have time or for different kinds of audiences, we may introduce interactivity depending on the capabilities of our tools. We can allow them to interact with our visuals, allow them to ask additional questions. And if they have a way to answer those questions, any follow on questions, then it encourages that engagement. And when we can, we can introduce what we call a drill down capability, allow them to discover data, allow them to ask additional questions, allow them to see insights. And again, eventually this will become an expectation and it's something that we need to anticipate. Data stories can be engaging. Data visualizations can help catapult that data story to new heights. This has been done before. And Hans Rosling is one of those people who has put data in the center stage. As a quote from the TED Talk website, in Hans Rosling's hands, data sings. And one of the most viewed videos is the best stats you've ever seen. If you haven't seen this before, I encourage you to watch this.